and welcome back to another episode of the Fork, Knife and Corkscrew. Today we have a really special episode planned because it's so beautiful out and the summer has finally arrived to the Okanagan. We are going on a picnic. So I am here at the Rotten Grape on one of the most spectacular patios in Kelowna and Chef Julio from the Rotten Grape is going to be taking us on a picnic, showing us how to prepare and pairing us with some awesome wines from Kalala. So before we head out there, I wanna let you know that you could be the proud owner of this bottle of Chardonnay ice wine from Kalala, but you have to stay till the end of the episode to find out how. Let's go. Hi everyone, I'm uh, Chef Giulio from The Rotten Grape and it's great to be back on the show. And um, you might uh, notice something a little bit different about me if you, uh, if you follow the show from the beginning, but uh, don't worry, the passion is untouched and I'm here to show you some great simple recipe to create a perfect picnic. We picked uh, the perfect day for a beautiful picnic. The sunshine is uh, shining upon us. And I just want to take a minute, a minute to thank you, Carnell, to uh, have us here in this beautiful uh, Kalana uh, organic winery. And uh, this is the perfect background for uh, the perfect picnic. Hello, Carnell. Hi, how are you? I'm good. <laughs> Thanks for having us. <laughs> So what we're gonna create today, the first uh, really simple, we're gonna make a cheese sandwich. It doesn't get any simpler than that. To make it extra special, we have a little bit of fresh sage. And uh, the best thing, way to use uh, fresh, uh, fresh herb is uh, just to break them up with your hands and you're gonna smell the aromas and, and they're just gonna add that little extra flavor, that little uh, extra love to your, uh, to your sandwich. I have a little bit of sourdough bread here. I'm just gonna cut it quite thin because we don't need uh, we don't need uh, too much, too much bread, and uh, you know it is. This is a picnic, so you might have to adapt to the situation. Always change it. A little bit of uh, aged cheddar, and uh, I pick something that is uh, it's a little bit sharper, aged for a couple of years. But you can really use uh, any kind of cheddar that you like. Now, because the cheddar is quite uh, salty and quite pungent, you want something to kind of offset that that strength of flavor. So what we're gonna do. We have a beautiful Royal Gala apple grown here in the valley. It's going to add moisture, it's going to add sweetness, and it's going to balance out the flavor of the, uh, the cheese perfectly. And this is just a classic combination that is also going to really help us to uh, pair it with the perfect wine. So I'm just going to put a couple of nice juicy sliced uh, pieces of apple and my sage here that is just so fragrant and so aromatic. I just really, really love it. And we're going to put Put it right on top and this is our little uh, cheddar, apple and uh, sage panini. Now it's important that uh, the food that you'll be preparing is, is simple because you don't want to be cooking anything. You just want to be able to have fun and use what you have uh, in the house. Uh, what we're going to do for a second course is going to be a little lettuce straps. Uh, very, very simple. We don't need to cook anything. Actually, I lied. I cooked a little bit of quinoa. Uh, at home. Quinoa is a grain high in protein in an iron so and it's uh, just a really nice, it will add a really nice texture and uh, it's cooked in uh, with a bit of water and uh, sea salt. One part uh, quinoa to uh, uh, one part water, 1.5 part water. So I'm gonna add a little quinoa inside my bowl and I have a, a grater. Uh, you can grate really, literally any vegetables that you have kicking around in your in your fridge. Uh, I'm gonna grate a little cucumber I have a little zucchini. If you had pepper, it would work uh, just great. Uh, a few uh, Kalamata olives. We're just gonna add a nice saltiness in, uh, to the dish. And uh, here is my uh, secret sauce. Like I said, in a, in a day that is uh, hot like today, you don't wanna be cooking anything. So what I did, I took the most ripened tomatoes that I found at the, at the grocery store. You know, they're so ripened that you, you cannot cut through them. They will splash all over the place. And I just threw them raw, just like that, in a blender with a, a splash of olive oil, a little piece of fresh garlic and salt. What you have is a fresh tomato sauce that is up your, the simplest in flavor it can be. And you see, I just add towards the end, I just drizzle in a little bit of um, um, olive oil. 
And that's what's gonna give it that nice shine and the really, really nice te texture. So I'm just gonna add a little bit inside and... Uh, so the olive oil gives it that texture? Yeah, so it's sort of, uh, it, it's a French technique. Uh, it's called monte. So you're, you, the French people like to add butter, but I, I'm Italian, so I'm gonna finish it with olive oil, raw olive oil. So you get all the good stuff, all the good omega, omega fats, and why not? <laughs> and, uh, you know, we keep the tradition alive. And what else are we gonna put? What else can we put? I have a little bit here, and as you can see, it's literally uh, something that I found in my fridge. So a little bit for color, and a little bit of goat cheese. As you can tell, it's quite quite uh, warm out here. And you just wanna give it a good mix. And I picked some uh, collard greens. Collard greens are perfect to do uh, lettuce wrap because they have just a. Uh, beautiful big uh, leaves that are uh, quite workable so you can wrap them and you can literally use them like a wrap and all you want to do is you can see here the stem is quite thick so i just cut out the thick part so it won't be it won't cause me any trouble when i go to roll it and then you give a good mix we're gonna add a little bit of just a pinch of salt don't forget that uh, you have um, Olives already in there, they're quite salty. And just a little squeeze of fresh lemon. So everything is just gonna be very simple, very fragrant, and very fresh. And then we're gonna add it right in our beautiful green leaf. And then you're gonna roll it like this. And if you have, uh, if it's quite big, you can just cut it up like that. And voila, look. Beautiful colors, they kind of reminds me of summertime, which is just perfect. And then if you don't mind to get your hands dirty, then we can put a little bit of extra sauce right there. The, the preparing everything together uh, so you can get your girlfriend or your loved ones to help you cut up the vegetables, cut up the bread. I think it's part of the charm of, of having the perfect picnic. Now said that, I, the quinoa, you want to cook it at home and the sauce also you want to puree at home, just because it's a little bit easier. Uh, I, I swing by the grocery store this morning and I saw these uh, beautiful organic cherries and uh, I said, we can make something with that because they're so beautiful and they, they're gonna taste so great and juicy that uh, it wasn't hard to come up with something really special. Oh, I hope actually, I've never made them before, so. <laughs> Hopefully it tastes good. So what I'm doing, I'm just gonna remove the pit. I have a little bit of sliver hormones over here. So I'm just gonna put an almonds and cherry and almonds together is just an amazing flavor combination. As I told you before, you sometimes, uh, because you're not in a real kitchen, you have to adapt to the situation. So my chocolate is melting, which is gonna be great though, because it's just gonna add that little beautiful silky texture and you can see just, and it's also gonna help our cherry to kind of stick together. I think we did pretty good for our uh, improvised picnic and we had a lot of fun doing it and uh, I think it's time to uh, find the perfect wine to match with the food and uh, also enjoy the food, the wine, the beautiful place that uh, we're at and uh, the company. The best part of our picnic is yet to come because we're gonna have to uh, pair some uh, beautiful wine uh, from Kalala Winery uh, and we have uh, Jessica here to, is gonna help us to uh, in this uh, hard uh, and challenging task. <laughs> I actually brought four wines <laughs> along, Excellent. even though we only have three courses. Um, for the first course, which is the sharp cheddar apple and sage panini, um, I brought along our Riesling. It's a 2008. Um, has really nice acidity and body, and it's definitely on the drier side. Uh, it's going to go really, really well with the cheddar and the apple as well. So um, you'll get a lot of apple flavor in the wine and mm. therefore it will pair really, really well with the food. If you can identify common flavors, that's one and key. And work, work with them. Yeah. Also, um, the most important thing is probably matching body. So this is um, fairly light bodied food. Obviously it's a picnic where we're eating light and uh, the wine is also light. So that's key. That sounds great. I can, we, can we try it? Yeah, <laughs> no rules here. You gotta make the rule. I think it's gonna work out perfect. Cheers. Cheers, guys. That Thanks for coming uh... over. Another so... thing that I should mention is Riesling is one of the most food friendly wines. So, when in doubt, if you're having something kind of light bodied, definitely a Riesling's a, a smart choice. And it can even stand up to some fuller bodied.
foods as well. So for the wrap, um, tomato sauces are actually notoriously difficult to pair with. Uh, you definitely need a wine that will stand up in acid. And because we're eating light, we want a light bodied wine. Um, so Pinot Noir is gonna pair quite nicely with it. I'm having a great day. <laughs> I know, <laughs> not a bad day at all. The wine are, are delicious. I, I never had a chance to come and can visit oh, them here. They're just absolutely great. That is so good. The flavor is nice. Mm -hmm. The tomato sauce, when it's uh, not cooked like that, it just is so fresh. Mm -hmm. I chose our Zweigelt ice wine. Um, with dessert pairings, you definitely want the wine to be sweeter than the dessert, and this ice wine will definitely do that. Um, the chocolate and cherries will complement the flavors in here as well. There is some chocolate-covered cherry in here, uh, almost some canned peach as well which is really nice, so it should go well with the fruit. It's very, very nice. I, Martin, I can't wait you, for you to try this. So you have different flavors. You bite into the cherry, and then the, the juiciness of the cherry first hits you, and then the dark chocolate and the almonds. And the, the ice wine is just carrying, it, carrying mm -hmm. you through beautifully. All the flavors adding layer. It's, it's really, uh, really nice. Yeah. Thank you. you have, Thank you. Lunch you was delicious. A, an excellent job, Jessica. Thank you. Cheers. Chee -chee. Well, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I do. I'm always amazed at how easy he can make that look. So there you have it. A couple tips to make your next picnic the most amazing thing ever. Show it off to your friends. Use your skills. As we had said earlier, we do have this bottle of Chardonnay ice wine from Kalala that actually won gold last year in the Chardonnay du Mont. So it's pretty fancy. Pretty amazing stuff. And this could be yours simply by going to okwineries.com, finding a favorite wine, leaving a comment. We'll be sourcing through the comments. Everyone will be entered into the draw. We will draw for this next Thursday and it'll be posted on our Facebook page. So check out the Facebook page on Thursday, see if you are the lucky winner. Maybe give us a little like while you're there and we'll see you next week.